Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see more from me. But today I'm going to be pitting the new MacBook Air 2020 against the old MacBook Pro 2015 against each other. So let's uncover them right now. This competition might seem crazy at first, like how can you pit a MacBook Pro against a MacBook Air? But with the advancements of the new MacBook Air, despite some of its sort of thermal issues that you might have read into, which I will talk about, this is a huge leap forward. And I really want to see if you own a MacBook Pro from 2015 or before, are you better off with that? Or should you pick up a new MacBook Air, which is much lighter and thinner? Well, hopefully this video will answer that question. And trust me, the results will literally surprise you. So be sure to watch the whole video as it gets proper juicy. So let's run down the specs of these two MacBooks and see what we're working with here. First of all, let's talk about ports as this is a big one. The MacBook Pro wins here as this has the MagSafe 2 charger, which is just the king of all charge connectors. And in my opinion, always will be as it's safe and it has this nice little charge LED that turns orange when it's charging and then green when it's fully charged, meaning that I don't have to check my battery status on uh, the MacBook or have to open up my MacBook to know when it's fully charged. A little bit annoying about this. Next, it has two Thunderbolt 2 ports, which are really useful for things like gigabit ethernet and external displays. And then we also have two USB 3.0A ports, which both are five gigabit and does the job. It also has an SD card slot, meaning no dongles. Now the MacBook Air ports, which there are two of, are more powerful as you can buy a single dongle, which then can give you pretty much everything that you see on the MacBook Pro 2015. Plus, I guess it's Thunderbolt 3 as well. So if you've got a Thunderbolt 3 drive, then you can just get some super fast speeds from this thing. I'd probably change my answer now. If you don't mind spending, let's say another 70 pounds and carrying a dongle, then the MacBook Air probably wins in this. If you want a product that has everything built in without having to pay anything extra, then the MacBook Pro 2015 wins in this case. Next is the design. And I think both are really, really nice. Even five years on, the MacBook Pro still holds up well as its unibody design is kind of timeless. The MacBook Air, in my opinion, wins it though because I just love this space gray color and it's smaller and lighter. The MacBook Air is around 0.68 pounds lighter or 290 grams lighter than the MacBook Pro and it's 0.08 inches thinner uh, at its thickest point compared to the MacBook Pro. But with its tapered design, it's actually much thinner than that. I much prefer the trackpad on the MacBook Air, but both just let you know feel absolutely identical. Also, I prefer the keyboard on the MacBook Air as it has much less travel. And for longer typing sessions, I prefer it because it seems less fatiguing. By the way, here's a type test between the two for you keyboard guys out there. One big thing is the screen. Both have the same 2560 by 1600 retina display if you look at the spec sheet, but the MacBook Air actually displays more sRGB colors than the MacBook Pro of 2015. The screen on the MacBook Air looked slightly better to my eyes, but only just. It seems to have a little bit more sort of contrast and the colors seem to pop a little bit more. Weirdly enough, however, I had to change the white point on this MacBook Air as it seemed a little bit warm when I had a pure white background. And yes, I turned off the true tone display and the night shift settings, but I thought it was something that I should mention and probably something that you should look into or you might have to do when you pick up one of these. Once I adjusted the screen though, the MacBook Air was just spot on. I just wish I had a proper calibration 
tool to firstly make sure that the screens were both set up the same and to see which one was scientifically better for let's say color grading uh, workflow. I mean, both wouldn't be ideal for that kind of stuff, but for YouTube, let's say like what I do, I just want the best possible image. And I think that the MacBook Air probably wins. Also the bezels on the MacBook Air are better as they're smaller and they just feel more modern for 2020. So I would rather work on the MacBook Air screen, in my opinion. When it comes to battery life, again, the MacBook Air wins here as it has just more power efficient internals. Also, the MacBook Air wins in the microphone and speaker department, honestly. The MacBook Pro speakers and microphone are just dated at this point. Here's a comparison between the two and see which one you prefer. This is the MacBook Pro webcam and microphone quality. So it's okay, but not great. As you can see, a lot of grain in the background. I've got a light just over here shining my face, but again, just a test of the grain. It's not brilliant. This is the MacBook Air now, uh, webcam and microphone. And the microphone is actually a little bit better, but the webcam is still shockingly bad. Uh, I cannot believe that even after five years, they still haven't updated this webcam. Please, Apple, come on. So let's get into the meat of this comparison as I'm sure you guys want to know which performs better. Setting the foundation of the tests, we have an i5 10th gen Intel MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of RAM and Intel Iris Pro graphics. And the MacBook Pro has an i5 5th gen processor with 16 gigabytes of RAM and only Intel Iris graphics, not the Pro. Looking at the specs though, you might think that the MacBook Pro will probably do pretty well against the MacBook Air? Well, let's have a look. Firstly, here are the results for the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. The results are pretty much the same, so copying files or working off of these drives wouldn't be a problem at all. For the Blackmagic RAW Test, the MacBook Air wins as the performance is just so much better than the MacBook Pro in this instance. We're nearly seeing double the numbers. The Cinebench scores, we see the same again with the MacBook Air winning with over a hundred points of difference. Nova Bench was the same too, with the MacBook Air scoring 67 more points than the MacBook Pro. The GPU performance on the new MacBook Air is great thanks to the Intel Iris Plus graphics. On U Unigen Valley, it scored 93 more points than the MacBook Pro. So let's get into some workflow tests and see how these numbers translate in the real world. So we've got both the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro side by side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Final Cut Pro test to see which one sort of performs better for sort of my workflow as a content creator. Next up, we're gonna be checking out the CPU temperatures and then we're going to be doing a scrubbing test and a playback test on both better quality and better performance on both machines. And then we're going to see how quickly it exports both of the projects. So first of all, let's check out the CPU temperatures as that is something that a lot of people have mentioned before on both machines. So the idle temperature on the dual core MacBook Pro, we've got 37 slash 38 degrees. And then on the MacBook Air, on pretty much all four cores, we're about sort of 42 to 43 degrees. So not a, a big difference between the two. Now let's launch the project in Final Cut Pro, which is a 4K 8-bit project with two levels of color grading, a couple of transitions, as well as a sound grade. So let's see which one opens up the project quicker. So it actually took the MacBook Pro a little bit longer to load than the MacBook Air. Now let's see the scrubbing performance of the two machines. So let's start off with the MacBook Pro. So we're gonna maximize both of those screens and then let's make sure we got view set to better performance and let's check out the scrubbing. So scrubbing performance is very good on performance on the MacBook Pro. Now let's do a playback test. So we're gonna enable the speaker. Just play that. So cars are moving, I've speed ramped it. So it's now moving quite quickly. And then it sort of slows down. 
So plays back really nicely, no visible drop frames. Now let's set it to better quality and let's check out the scrubbing performance. So the scrubbing performance is not as good, I would say, but still, still, still absolutely fine for everyday use. Now let's do a playback test. Cars are moving, I've speed wrapped it, so it's now moving quite quickly. And then it sort of slows down again. So on better, perf on better quality, as you can see, the MacBook Pro really struggled to play that footage back. Now let's go over to the MacBook Air and see how the performance is on that one. So better performance, and let's check out the scrubbing. So scrubbing is pretty good. Now let's do a playback. So it's now moving quite quickly. And then it sort of slows down. So no issues on that one. Now let's set it to better quality and see if it performs any better. So now let's do a scrubbing test. Oh yeah, the scrubbing on the MacBook Air on better quality is far better than what's on the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, from what I can see. Now let's do a playback test. Just play that, so cars are moving, I've speed ramped it, so it's now moving quite quickly. And then it sort of slows down again. So the MacBook Air actually really surprised me. So. On the better quality setting on Final Cut Pro, playing back the footage, even with a transition on this on this project, it played back with no sort of visible drop frames. I mean, there maybe may have been one or so drop frame here and there, but to be honest, it wasn't noticeable at all. So that is amazing performance to see from the MacBook Air. Now let's check out the the temperatures on both the CPUs on the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air. So let's launch that and just have a look. So we've got the CPU temperature just over here and we've got the CPU temperature just over here. So on the MacBook Pro, we've got a CPU stable, stable temperature at 41 degrees-ish here and there. And then on the MacBook Pro, on the MacBook Air, it has increased ever so slightly at around 50, 56 to, yeah, 56-ish uh, degrees. So it's about a 10 degree difference between the two machines, but nothing, nothing too drastic, not as much as what people were saying. So now let's do a little test to see what is what which is quicker in terms of uh export times okay so we've just passed the 50 percent mark at around nine minutes on the macbook air and as you can see the macbook pro is sat at around 26 percent and the macbook air is now at 23 percent so now let's have a look at the temperatures of both systems right now the cpu core on the macbook pro is at around 95 degrees and on the MacBook Air, we've got a CPU temperature of, well, nearly 100 degrees. So not really that far off each other, maybe about, you know, five to 10 degrees each. Now, in terms of fan speed, the MacBook Air is actually kicking up its fans pretty much at full blast at nearly 8,000 RPM. And on the MacBook Pro, we, we've got fan speeds of about 5,000 RPM. So the MacBook Pro is actually doing the rendering at a much quieter noise than the MacBook Air. So definitely thermal issues on the MacBook Air, but it seems to still be performing really well, actually nearly double the performance in terms of ex export on this scenario than the MacBook Pro. So we're now at just under 80 minutes and the MacBook Air has now completed the project export and the MacBook Pro is still at 50%. That is incredible performance from the MacBook Air. It did sound louder throughout the whole process, but the fact that it managed to do it in under sort of 18 minutes, and the fact that the MacBook Pro 2015 with its i7 processor 
is still at 50% rendering. I mean, if you've got one of these at the moment and you're not too worried about fan noise or anything like that, the MacBook Air might actually be a good upgrade to the MacBook Pro. If we just have a quick look at the temperatures, so sh so it's dropped down straight away and on the MacBook Pro, so we're still at around 5,000 RPM on the fan speed, but on the cores, we're still sitting around 97, you know, there you go, look, it's just peaked to 100 degrees. So it's definitely kicking up a lot and the fans are ramping up a lot on the MacBook Pro. So both still have, you know, issues with, I'd probably say temperature, but the MacBook Air definitely, it has a, a higher fan speed and noise when it's rendering out projects like this. So a nine minute project taking just under 18 minutes in this case, and the MacBook Pro is still going at only around 50%. So we're now at 35 minutes and the MacBook Pro has just completed the export. So this has taken approximately double the amount of time compared to the MacBook Air. So that is a big, big difference. So let's jump back into the video. Now, one comment I keep seeing about the MacBook Air 2020 is how the general performance is when web browsing and streaming content. I've put up the temperature and fan speeds of the MacBook Air when streaming Netflix in the background and having seven YouTube videos playing at the same time. And even though the temperatures are a little bit high and the fan is on, you generally can't hear the fan noise at all unless you put your ear right to the laptop. I see many people being put off by this MacBook Air because of its thermals and are worried that the fans are really loud when using this laptop for everyday tasks. But I've done the tests and for everyday tasks, you will not notice. So don't worry about this. I haven't had any issues with the fans. And yes, the thermals are on the sort of higher side, but it's not at any levels I would personally be worried about. So why did I do these tests? Well, I wanted to see if you have a MacBook uh, Pro from a few years ago, does that mean that you should still stick with it even if you are a pro user? I think that these tests show that the MacBook Air is a capable machine and can replace your old MacBook Pro and it holds its own, even beating it with most of the tasks that I threw at it. Also, the MacBook Air has a quad core processor over the dual core processor that's in the MacBook Pro, meaning that it can handle multitasking tasks much better. If you're exporting video or doing intensive stuff, any MacBook is going to have its fans ramp up and when you're using it for everyday tasks, the MacBook Air is a quiet machine. Now, does this mean that you should just go ahead and buy the MacBook Air if you have a MacBook Pro from a few years ago? I mean, if you aren't doing any intensive tasks, just get the MacBook Air because you'll be more than fine with it. And even if you're doing things like uh, video editing, it can handle it. But if you are a pure video editor, then I would just wait for the 14 inch MacBook Pro that's rumored to come out, as it's probably gonna be priced around the 1300 pound mark. So if you have a little bit of extra cash compared to the MacBook Air and you want that performance, then I would just say, wait for that. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on whether you agree or disagree with any of my points. Also, check out the links in the description below to support the channel. That really does help me out. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TechCarmoon and drop me a like if you've enjoyed this video and also hit that subscribe button if you want to see some more exciting content like this. Also, check out the videos over here if you want to see more of this face. Anyway, everyone, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.